Let me tell you a story about my computers. My real computer use began when I was in college, with this Mac Pro. Sometimes I even game on it. Then I started to gain interest in custom PC building, so I built this. This hobby really took off from there, and I built this small form factor water cooling mini ITX PC. It's called the Thorzone Mjolnir. It didn't work out very well. It looks good, but it didn't have enough cooling. I then moved on to build another mini ITX PC, the Loki Ghost S1. After this build, all I can say is that I hate small form factor cases and water cooling. I will never ever do another water cooling build again. When I watch other YouTubers build them, they are very cool. But when I did it myself, I hated every single minute of it. So one day I was browsing the web and I came across a post on Kijiji. A local electronic recycling center had these Alienware triangle cases for sale. $40 for all five of them. And of course, I got all five of them. Now these cases were all in horrible shapes. Scratches here, things and dents there. They all came with nothing but the case itself. No cables, no front aisle board, not even the power button. I will explain later why these parts are very important. But I really like the look and the design of the case. So I decided to build a computer with it and use it as my everyday case. This is the best Alienware ever. I did some research and this is an Alienware Area 51 R5 or R7 case. This case has two major versions. The first version Dell called them R2 and has an optical drive in the front. The second version, which I have here, an R5 or R7, has no optical drive. It has four USB 3 ports in the front with a mic and headphone jack. It feels more up to date this way. Most of the parts are from my previous build. Here are the parts. The CPU, the motherboard, CPU cooler, thermal paste, graphics card, power supply, NVMe M.2 drives, and a bunch of Dell proprietary cables. When I bought the cases, they came with no front aisle and no power button. I had to buy the one that fits this specific case. The front IO board is very important because it controls the lighting. And for some reason, I cannot get the Alienware command center to recognize this front IO board. So I'm using this R5 front IO board for the USBs and the audio only. They work perfectly. After some more research, people with the version 1 of the case, the R2, have successfully controlled the lighting without any Alienware proprietary motherboard. So I bought this, the front I.O. board from the R2 case, and I mounted it here beside my motherboard. It works like this. The front I.O. board has two connections to the motherboard, the USB and the power switch. And this board also connects to the power button board, which also connect to the front panel lighting. The power button board, Dell calls them the logo board, looks like this. Four connections for four individual LEDs and the connection to the IO board. And this is the front panel LED. They are placed in the four corners of the front panel. Top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. The back of the power button board also has two LEDs to light up the interior. The back of the case also has lighting, kind of like a night light. It works pretty well. Now on to the side panels. They light up as well, but I didn't like how it originally lit up. So I made some adjustments to the side panels. I cut out these channels so I could fit some RGB strips to shine through the panel. And then some hot glue to set them in place. This is the RGB kit that I used. The RGB neon kit from Fantax. And it looks like this. 
the original LEDs could not do effects like this as they are only one LED lighting through a plastic channel. I also removed the GPU support bracket from the case. The airflow of the case looks like this. Cold air intake from three fans at the front. The fan at the back exhausts out hot air. The CPU cooler also has a fan in the middle to help pushing air through. To me, this is a perfect air-cooled case. I saw people modding the case will cut out the front to fit a radiator in, but I'm not a big fan of water cooling. Not even an AIO. This completes the whole build. And I prepared a little montage for you to enjoy. Every time I take the panel off, I will have to disconnect the RGB cable. It's a little trade-off. At least it looks and functions better than the original. I did my best to manage the cables at the back. Every single function that this case was designed to do, works. The front lighting, side panel RGBs, backlight, all working perfectly. Now let's look at how it performs. I used Cinebench R23 to test the CPU. Everything is stock and not overclocked. Under full load, the CPU is sitting at around 64 to 69 degrees Celsius. Not bad at all. It hits around 3.9 to 4 gigahertz. I put the mic very close to the computer. Have a listen to the noise level. It's not loud at all. Now let's look at the GPU temperatures. Here I was playing some Cyberpunk 2077. And here are the settings. 4K, FSR is on auto, everything else is set to high or higher. The GPU is not at 100% load. The GPU temperature is around 70 to 74. The highest water draw was about 200 watts, with the fan spinning at around 1500 RPM. The game is at a playable frame rate around 40 to 60 FPS. This RX 6800 XT performs really well. Have a listen to the noise level again. Now with the CPU and GPU both under load, the fan noises are noticeable, but not annoying. Overall, I'm very happy with this computer. I really like the triangular design. It's a bit different from other everyday cases. For this build, I tried to not use any Dell or Alienware proprietary things to future-proof this case. I eliminated the Dell side panel RGBs so that I could easily control them with any motherboard I will use in the future. The front panel gave me no choice but to use the power button board and its related Alienware proprietary daughter board. With this case now, I'm not limited by any hardware selection. I can freely choose any CPU, motherboard, graphics card to put into the case. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.